Hi everyone, it's Justine and it's time for a quarterly Q&A. We'd better do a summer Q&A before summer is over. <laughs> Plus I want to start making videos about fall, so logically this one has to come before. <laughs> this time I asked you for a change on Instagram if you had questions for me. It's funny because the topics that pop up and the way the questions are phrased is totally different on Instagram versus YouTube. There are way too many questions for me to be able to answer all of them, but I will be as brief in my answers as possible so that I can go over more questions. First question. Do you write out a script for your videos or talk from your head or just from an outline? I wish I could just write down five bullet points and then free talk for 10 minutes and make an awesome video. I can't do that because English is not my mother tongue, so I need to look up some words. Even before I start filming, otherwise I get stuck in the middle and start paraphrasing and looking for words and it's, it's super annoying to watch, I think. Um, so I script everything. <laughs> the other thing is I want to make my videos as brief as possible to convey the points that I want to convey. So if I start talking freely, it's not going to be the shortest possible way of saying something. Next, will you ever have a freestanding shop for your designs? Maybe one day. It's not my priority at the moment. The objective before that would be to be sold in other boutiques or shops that sell multiple brands to generate learnings there before I jump in and do that on my own. It's also a whole other level of budget that would be required and hire people and everything um, that I can't afford at the moment, but maybe one day. How much do you spend on a piece of clothing? I'd say I shop at around the price level or price range that I also design at. Um, it wouldn't make sense to buy at a thousand euros or several hundred and then design crappy stuff or buy crappy stuff and then design for 2000. Um, so I try to keep everything consistent in what I design, consistent with my own shopping behavior, if that makes sense. Next, what would be the theme tune to your life today? Listen, I've been um, to Spain last weekend for a wedding, so all I've been listening to this week is reggaeton. <laughs> I will put, if you want, a playlist of what I'm listening to in the description below. You can have a look or an ear. What is your favorite period in history, both in fashion and in culture? Um, I, I have several ones, first off. Right now, I'm really into the Middle Age, so 14th, 15th century, because I've read a series of books. I can't stop thinking about that period. So there is Victor Hugo, uh, Notre Dame de Paris, Maurice Druon, Les Rois Maudits, The Doom Kings. I will put the name here somewhere in English. It's a series of several books, so it's, it's a long read. Great historical novel. I've been seeing exhibitions about that time. In France, we learn after 1500, everything got better. And before that, it was just dark and gloomy and very uncivilized and wild. I don't think that's actually true. Before 1500, great inventions were made, great people have lived, great fashion has been created. So I'm really digging deeper into that era that I feel I know too little about right now. What do you find the most challenging about doing YouTube? Well, it depends at which stage in the growth of the channel, right? Right now, it's getting harder and harder every time I make a video to make it relevant for everyone. And it probably won't be relevant for everyone because people watching are spread everywhere in the world, are different ages, different groups, have different tastes, behaviors, opinions, body types, etc. So realistically, not every video can be relevant for everyone. And so when I get comments saying that people are disappointed because of something I said, something I didn't say, something I did, <laughs> or with me as a person, um, it can be hard to, to, to put some distance between the feedback and what I think, what my opinion is and what I actually want to share and convey through a given video. What is your favorite flower? Great question. Never had that one. It's... Yeah, I don't know the word in English. See? La Campanule des Montagnes. So we'll put a picture somewhere so you can see how it looks. It grows in the Alps. What do you think about the trend when people color their hair bright colors? 
when I see somebody like that on the street, my first reaction is always, well done, good for you, taking risk, I like. And then comes the second step where I think, wait, 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 how do you do that with your undertone? Are you changing all the colors in your wardrobe now? How are you combining? Mm -mm. And then I start like analyzing, usually staring at the person until that person realizes it, gives me a bad look, and then I feel really awkward. That's usually the process. <laughs> How do you stay so positive? Well, I'm not always positive, that's for sure. Let me tell you, when you are an entrepreneur, it's a roller coaster. There are good days and there are terrible, terrible days. <laughs> but just as positivity is contagious, negativity is contagious as well. So I make sure that I don't share or film on the days where I'm feeling negative because I want to contaminate you only with the good side of what I do. When you plan a vacation, how do you decide where to go and what are your must-dos? How I decide is completely random. It can be a friend's recommendation, usually reliable. Um, an article I read, a page in the Lonely Planet. I have the Lonely Planet world with one page per country. Brilliant. Highly recommend it. For instance, last year I went to Matera in the south of Italy. Never heard of that place before. And I read one day that it was to become the European capital city of culture for 2019. I thought, if they chose that town, there must be something about it. So I looked it up on maps, because like, where is even Matera? <laughs> I didn't know. Um, and I booked a trip. I got super cheap hotels, great food, wonderful, wonderful town. I put that in the highlights video that I did last year in April, I think, if you want to check it out. Yeah, and now it's famous, it's crowded, and the hotel prices have skyrocketed, so I'm glad I went before that. How I decide my must-dos? It has to include some culture, things that are only there, not a museum of which there are hundred more in more cities, you know, something that I can do only there. Same for experiences, I want to talk to people and I want to walk through the city. And if I have those points checked, it's great. What was your favorite thing during your London trip? Yes, so I went to London this year in June for further training. I took an embroidery course class there at the London Fashion School. What I like the most about London, especially in summer, is the way people dress. So street style, basically. It's edgier and more daring than in Berlin, definitely. I feel it's more personal than in Paris, more alternative also at least from what I know of London and Paris, of course. So I would typically sit down in a cafe outside, looking towards the street and just observe people as they walk by, comparing between different districts. Great hobby. <laughs> How do you manage to run a business, YouTube, travel and socialize? That does sound like a lot, doesn't it? I prioritize, that's the only possible way, I guess. So my business is my highest priority, which is why, although I enjoy making YouTube videos, you have seen Sundays missing this year on my upload schedule because I just had too much on my plate or things going on privately or I just needed a weekend off of business and YouTube so that that will happen sometimes and then traveling I do travel quite a bit especially within Europe because everything is so close and so well connected but technically when I travel I'm still working I have my laptop with me and half of the traveling time is actually working time. I just don't share that on Instagram stories because it's, it's boring. <laughs> it's just me seated in front of my laptop and you don't want to know about that. <laughs> um, and socializing, well, there are weeks where that one comes too short, I'll be honest. But I need people as much as I need being by myself sometimes. So I make sure that I get that balance right. Otherwise, I... I get into a hamster wheel and I, and I overheat very quickly. How do you learn so many languages? I think you can only learn one language if you have the previous one really steady, like fluent, safe, and you're not going to forget it if you start a new one. For instance, I learned English first, then I learned German, both from French, then I learned Japanese in English, and then I learned Spanish in Germany because I was already living in Germany. So yeah, each language needs to be safe enough, stable enough before you start a new one. And then you can really staple them. <laughs> Next one. When did you realize that you wanted to work in the realm of fashion? I guess when I 
understood what's going on behind the scene that you usually don't know as a as a regular consumer regular shopper when i understood that people are dying in some countries making clothes for people in richer countries to get cheaper clothes i thought that that's so not right it can't be <laughs> the only business model um the system is completely broken so i thought i'd suggest a, a different way of doing things and to do that, I needed to go back to school, study fashion, and then I could create my business. So that's what I did. Dear Justine, if you could meet anyone from fashion history, who would it be? 100% Marie Antoinette. She was the queen of France. She lost her head at the end of the 18th century, so in the French Revolution. She was said to have the biggest closet in Europe, and she ordered everything custom made from the best people and handcrafters in Europe. So I would love to have a peek into her closet. Imagine like a, a room tour of Marie Antoinette's closet that would go viral on YouTube for sure. Are you working on any new collection? Yes. <laughs> it's too early to talk about it here, but it will come. What was the hardest thing about starting your own business? I would say definitely finding the information that I needed when I needed it. Because now I've been in this for, for almost four years. No, over four years. And YouTube, almost four years. Yeah, so over four years. And now I'm hearing things, thinking like, how did I not know this before? Why didn't anyone tell me? And people go, everyone knows that. Well, I didn't. And I needed that information three years ago. <laughs> and thinking about it, I could do a video talking about how I started what I did right and what I did wrong, looking back at it, just to share the kind of learnings that I wish somebody had shared with me before. If you're interested in that kind of video, let me know down below in the comments. I could do a dedicated video just about that and there is enough to talk about. What is your comfort food? I love your work on YouTube, by the way. Warm hugs from India. Hello to everyone watching from India and to you asking the question. My comfort food is what my mom used to make for me when I was sick as a child. And that would be a crushed banana, a good one, a mature one, with sugar and freshly squeezed lemon juice on top. You mix that and it has vitamin C, acidity and sugar. So that's everything you need to get you back on track, basically. It also tastes excellent, I think. Are you married and or do you have kids? I am not married and I do not have kids. I also do not have a pet. I travel too much and I have a startup to take care of at the moment. So that's the plan for now. That's it for this video. Thumbs up if you enjoyed it and if you watched until the end. Thank you very much for your support, always. Subscribe to this channel if you're looking forward to full themed videos coming your way starting next week. On Instagram, in my stories, I will try to answer more questions because I feel like there were many more that were super interesting that I didn't have time to tackle here. So I'd like to tackle them over on Instagram. I will see you very soon in a new video. And until then, I wish you a fantastic week. Take care. Bye.